in today's video i want to explain what is the meaning of balance sheet and what you should expect when you prepare your balance sheet okay maybe before we go to preparation of balance sheet let's start with understanding of what is the meaning of balance sheet or what is the main purpose when we prepare a balance sheet all right so when we prepare a balance sheet actually we want to see a position of a company or a business we want to see a position is it a company in a good position or bad position that's the balance sheet that is going to answer that question all right now let's um, check how the balance sheet look like okay at first you must know that the balance sheet start from assets account section then assets account section is divided into two subsection which we have number one and none current assets and we also have a current asset current asset okay let's start with understanding of what is the meaning of non current assets obviously assets in a simple term we can say that this is the item that control or owned by the business okay non current assets guys we are talking about an asset that is going to last more than a year more than a year or you can say 12 months okay which means that this is an asset that is going to last for a long time for example guys you have ppe item you might also have a fixed asset okay fixed assets can be ppe as well okay let me just say fixed deposit number two fixed deposit okay let's go back to ppe item ppe item guys you can also call it fixed assets for example we have a computer obviously if you purchase computer guys you're expecting to use it for more than a year something like vehicle guys you can't purchase a vehicle with the purpose of using it just for a, a week the purpose is to use it for more than a year okay we also have a building and many more assets all right so number two i said is a fixed deposit so if you invest into a bank for more than 12 months we call it fixed deposit okay actually this is also known as investment okay it's investment but in terms of what deposit in terms of cash because we also have investment property investment property is like when we invest in a property we can invest maybe for example in terms of purchasing a building but that building we don't own it but we invest into it so that we can get what a rental in return okay a rental money in return okay now now let's go to a current asset a current asset guys we are talking about an asset that lasts less than a year okay what does this mean this asset uh, is going to be used anytime for example we have inventory if we purchase inventory guys the purpose is to sell it we can sell it we can buy it today and sell it tomorrow which means that we are not expecting to use it for more than 12 months okay we also have data or trade and other receivable data this is these are the people that purchase to us on credit which means that those people were expecting them to pay us within what within 12 months okay if someone come today and borrow a bread we can't say that the person will pay next year no the person is going to pay us normally within 30 days okay we also have cash and cash equivalent this is this is the note guys that inside you are going to find a bank like uh, the other thing is also petty cash so when we talk about bank guys into our business normally cash flow in and out almost every day when we sell we are receiving cash when we go and purchase stock 
we are paying out cash, which means that the bank movement is within a year. It's going, it's going to move each and every day. Okay. Now, let's go to... After assets, guys, we have equity and liability. Okay. Then under equity, we are going to start with equity. Under equity, guys, we have a capital and we also have retained earnings. Let's start with capital. Capital in a simple term, guys, we can say that this is the cash contributed by the owner. Or if it's a company, we can just say this is where shareholders belong to. This is where we record share purchased. Okay. Retaining innings, this is the income, or in other words, you can call it retain income. This is the income that we retain after we contributed what a net profit that we got from income statement. For example, if we made a profit of 50 rand and we contributed 30 rand to shareholders, we pay shareholders 30 rand and 20 rand we call it retained. We retain it to, to this account, okay, to our equity, okay. Then after that, we're going to have liability part. Under liability part, number one, we're going to start with none, current liability. Okay, non current liability is similar with non current assets because they're going to repay this loan after more than 12 months more than 12 months for example guys uh, when we talk about a liability we owe someone as a company we are owing someone so in this case the good example is loan from the bank if we borrow loan from the bank and we expect to pay that loan after five years we call it non-current liability because it's a long term it's more than 12 months okay we can have a loan or mortgage bond, okay? Then after that, we're going to have our current liability. Okay, when we talk about current liability, it's similar with current assets because they last less than a year. Less than a year. For example, guys, see. Uh, we have our creditors. Creditors, a good example of creditors is our supplier, those who supply to us on credit, those who supply inventory to us on credit. We have to pay them within 12 months because we are going to sell that inventory within 12 months. Okay? We can also have payee or pay as you earn SARS. Okay, this is the text that we collect from our, okay, we can just say pay as you earn, because when we say SARS, it's going to be related to South Africa only. So, we have a text that we collected from our employees, then we call it pay as you earn, we have to pay it to the government within 12 months, okay, then after that we can also have Tax liability, it also falls under what current liability because we have to pay it within 12 months. So this is how the balance sheet look like. Actually, when we prepare a balance sheet, guys, we want to see how many assets do we have compared to what to liability. Okay, that's why the equation says asset is equal to owner's equity plus liability okay in other words assets this part is equal to these two parts all right why does this two part if it's 100 must be equal with this one as 100 very simple guys because equity is like a net uh, asset is the same as not a net assets because asset 
minus liability equals to owner's equity, which is the same as total assets that we have minus liability that we owe someone equals to net assets. So it's the same. These two equations, they're the same. They're the exactly the same. So that's what you need to understand when it comes to a balance sheet. So before you, you treat the transaction, guys, you must first make sure that you understand the basics, the understanding of this all words so that it can be very simple for you to understand the balance sheet. So I did the other videos for the other part of a balance sheet. Some of them I explain inventory separate, data separate. So please go and to, to a playlist and watch them so that you will have more understanding uh, when it comes to a balance sheet. Don't forget to like, to subscribe. I will see you on the next one.